Okay, we're live. Welcome everybody. We are here this week for Free Spirit Inspired by uh, Free Spirit and I am Sharon Thornton. Uh, we welcome all of our fellow makers and sewing enthusiasts. We have a fun inspired by this week for you. We are here this week with our own Debbie Stark, our creative director here at Free Spirit Fabrics. And she is going to be uh, walking us through the digital printing process here at Free Spirit Fabrics. So we're hoping that uh, you all enjoy this. I know as a uh, sewer, it's always very interesting to understand how the products that we work with are made and the process in which everything's created. So we're creators and we like to see how everything's created and made. So that's what we're gonna share with you today. Uh, we are coming to you from our Free Spirit office today. We are in North Carolina and it's a sunny, beautiful day here. Please tell us where you're tuning in from. You know that we love to know where you're from. So please share that with us. Give us thumbs ups and hearts and likes as we go through this process today, You know, giving us uh, nudges of, of confirmation that you like what you're seeing. We always love to see that as well. Um, Lindsay Dryden is going to be on. She's gonna share any links, any questions that you have about Free Spirit or maybe the collection if we're talking about it. Uh, she will post those links. If you have any questions about Free Spirit Fabrics, go to freespiritfabrics.com. That is where you can find all of our collections that we currently have that we're offering. We have a lot of inspiration and uh, patterns and programs and different, you know, things that you can create. So go, go there, go to our website, look at our collections and all the projects that we have. Uh, I would like to remind everybody that if you tune in late or you missed us or you want to watch us again, that we're live now, as you know, we will post this to our Facebook page, we will post it to Instagram, and we will also post it to our YouTube page. So you can come back and watch again if that's what you would like to do. We encourage you to view and review if that's, you know, uh, if you missed any of it or you want to watch it again. Um, we'd like you to send us some questions if you have any questions along the way. Uh, Sarah Asby is also here for Free Spirit Fabrics, and I will show you Sarah and Debbie once we get into the design room. And uh, she, she's going to be looking at the questions that you're sending through. So please, you know, send through questions as we go, as Debbie talks about the process. We would uh, very much like to know what your questions are. We will do our best to answer them. So I would like to just say that the quilt behind me, oh, what we're talking about today is Denise Burkett. And the quilt behind me is called Dovetail by Denise Burkett. It was one of her previous collections called Art Excursion. So this uh, PDF should already be on our website if you were interested in this, this particular quilt. But there's that quilt. And uh, like I just said, Debbie's gonna be talking about Denise Burkett. Uh, the collection is called Stillness in Nature and it ships this June and it's a very tight 10 piece collection. So Debbie is going to tell us all the ins and outs about this collection as we move forward here today. So without further ado, I am going to transfer this camera over to Debbie Stark. Um, hold on one second, and then I'm going to join Debbie and Sarah in the design room. So let me see here, hold on. Okay, Debbie, I believe- Well, thank you, on. Sharon. <laughs> it's so nice to see everybody on this beautiful day here in Charlotte, North Carolina. As Sharon said, I'm Debbie Stark. I am creative director at Free Spirit Fabrics. And I'm here today to talk a little bit about digital printing and what the art process is through digital printing and how we make determinations on what we're going to print digitally. So we're gonna talk about in particular, Denise Burkett, and this is her second collect, no, this is her third collection with us. Um, the one that was the quilt that was behind Sharon was her first collection, and that was Art Excursion. We had a second collection, and this is the third collection, Stillness in Nature. So I wanted to give you a little bit of background about Denise. She is a prolific artist. She just has such a beautiful way about her. She is from Australia, and she spends a great deal of her time touring around Australia in her motorhome. So to get an understanding of what the inspiration was behind this collection, I'm gonna to read to you her inspiration statement. Driving in my motorhome towards the end of the day, I look out for an overnight spot. I've seen Mary Pool Free Camp listed in my Northern Territory camp book, 
which is my go-to information kept on the dashboard. It's listed as being 180 kilometers east of Fitzroy Crossing and 108 kilometers west of Halls Creek. Finally, I have the signpost in vision. I drive a distance off the highway in and around. It appears there are other travelers parked here for the night, positioning themselves away from each other. I choose a spot amongst the gray gum trees, pull up and go for a walk. This remote location is on the edge of the Margaret River, eucalyptus gums, with their gnarly trunks and outstretched limbs are shredding thickly chalky and smoky salmon colored bark. They gracefully bend wide over a red and sandy ochre dry river creek bed. Time on your own brings much reflection. I absorbed the surrounds in late afternoon, continual rounds of the sounds of cicadas. I notice a calm come over me in the stillness. My creativity becomes all encompassing. I set up a table and chair outside find my art paper and paints and gather bits of charcoal, the remnants of another traveler's campfire. In my paint palette, I squeeze out and mix earthy colors and paint vibrant earth, the first of many that afternoon. I'm most content and at one with nature. So I think it's only fitting that we talk about her first piece of inspiration that she talks about is vibrant earth. And what we do is, um, Denise sends in, we work back and forth. It's a real collaborative effort. So she sent in her first piece of art and she's literally just taken a recycled piece of paper that she's done other paintings on and she created beautiful, vibrant earth. And you can see the texture and the color palette. And we determine between color, scale and the size of the repeat, whether we're going to print it digitally or traditionally. And in the case of Denise Burkett, she used she uses so much color that it's really hard to get it to a point where we can print it traditionally and really mirror what she's done in her original artwork. When we talk about traditional printing, you know, we have a maximum screen count of 18, which means we can only use 18 colors in a design. And even within this first print, there are so many gradations in shading and color that there was, it was a starting point to say we should really consider doing it digitally. When we print digitally, we have no restrictions when it comes to the number of colors we can use, the size of the repeat. Um, oftentimes, if you think about Denise Burkett or another artist that we print a lot digitally is Sue Penn. Sue's repeats are often 36 and 45 inches long. And I'm not talking about the width of the goods, I'm talking about the length. When we introduced Denise's first collection, Art Excursion, one of her repeats was 56 inches long. So it was huge and you can't really feel the passion of her art if we made it into a 36 inch repeat because we've now limited color and we've now had to scale down the design. So it's no longer really the voice of Denise Burkett. So we're gonna go through the whole collection of Stillness in Nature, which will be available in stores yeah. in June. Um, and I'm gonna talk about first this particular design, which is Vibrant Earth. So Denise sends to us her original art. We take her original art and we scan it into our computer system and then we start manipulating and playing with it. So if you look at, there's her original piece of art and here is what we've printed off of our system here in the office that we send to the mill to use as a color standard. Oftentimes we don't like to send the original art to the mill in case it gets lost. I mean, we have to rely on FedEx and obviously with, um, COVID and everything else, things have been a little sticky and, and concerning. So like I said, we have sent off color standards that we print in-house. Now you will notice there is some variation between the original piece of art and the printout, but oftentimes we go back and forth and work with the artist so we can say, gee, in order to have this collection sit better together, we need to adjust color in this direction, or we need to take out the vibrant green and we want to bring it down a little and add a little more of the burgundy coloration. So there's a lot of give and take between all of us. And ultimately, once we've decided on the final collection. I didn't get that. Could you try again? Sorry, sorry is talking to us. Anyway, once we get to the final assortment, we send it to the designer for sign off. And then we send everything to the mill. So you'll see again, here's the original piece of art. Here's the color printout. And here's what we call our first strike off that we got back from the mill. So again, you'll see, I mean, I know it's really difficult to see and I don't know, maybe- Do you want me to- Yeah, I'm gonna have 
Sharon sort of go down on the table so we can see it better. You can see just how vibrant the colors are. And with the experience that my team has, we understand where we're gonna get shifts and variations from the print mills. So while this was very green and earthy, we warmed it up a little bit here and we knew we were still gonna get another variation from the original piece of art. So we go back and forth and we go back and forth until we feel like we have gotten the piece of strike off fabric as close as humanly possible to the printed color standard. So this one was Vibrant Earth and that's the first in a series in this collection of 10 SKUs. I'm gonna take you down to my favorite piece And here is Sunrise Shimmer. So here is Denise's original piece of art. Again, I mean, you can see it's original. She does it while she travels around the countryside of Australia. We felt like it was absolutely beautiful, but we also know when we digitally print, we sometimes have a hard time achieving some of these vibrant or intense colors. And sometimes the way color radiates off each other we get different variations. So we scanned in the original piece of art. This was our color printout that we sent to the mill. And because Free Spirit is known for our excessive use of color, we obviously pumped the color up a little bit in this. Keep in mind, we wanna make sure that the first collection leads into the second collection, leads into the third collection. So if you're a huge Denise Burkett fan and you've purchased Art Excursion, you wanna be able to use some of the pieces from Art Excursion in Stillness and Nature. So we keep all of that in mind as we <laughs> develop and move on to the next collections consecutively with the designer. So we took the original piece. You can see the richness of some of these reds. Unfortunately, you can't see it because it's drawn off the page here, but it picks up from here. So we've pumped up the reds and we've sort of pumped up the blue. So it played back to the quilt that you saw behind Sharon earlier. We've also pumped up the yellows because we also know while we pump this up, when it comes time to production and with how fast the machines run, we're gonna get some, maybe a little bit of a dull down result. So we've taken the original, we've popped the color a little bit, but you can see we've kept the scale very, very similar. And then here was our top of production sample that we have approved. So again, there's still some variation in color, but when you digitally print, we oftentimes can only make global adjustments. When we traditionally print, we can change and adjust each screen color. But when we digitally print, we tend to just shift colors in one direction or another. So again, you can see just how beautiful and bright the centerpiece of the flower became. But you can see how this flower really is very much dead on. So again, in order to achieve a good balance, we play with the adjustments from a global perspective. And it is just a beautiful piece of cloth. So I'm gonna take you to the next piece that, so that's piece number two in the collection. Piece number three, we don't still have the original piece of art, but we scanned it in, and this was a magic marker drawing that Denise did that we just saw, oh my gosh, it is so sensational. It looks like satin stitching. It looks like, you know, magic marker ink. It just is so yummy. So we took this piece, we sent it to the mill, and this is the piece of actual digital fabric we got back. Absolutely gorgeous. If we open it up, this one is called wafting leaves. So she just sees so much color as she moves through the countryside. It's really beautiful. It picks up the greens. You've got the rich earth tones of the browns. You've got these pops of red and pink. It's just beautiful. And again, we couldn't necessarily achieve all the gradation of color and shading and the various depths and saturation levels as we do here with digital printing. So that was piece number two. Piece number three that we're gonna talk about right here. So here's her original piece of art. And we get art in all different sizes. And this is called All In Together. So we took this piece of art, we scanned it, 
we created our piece. We manipulated color a little bit to give us just a little more punch in this area and to make sure like this more, what's more yellow cast here has a little bit more green cast here. Cause again, we know how color will play when we print it on fabric. And then we pumped it up a notch and we got this beautiful piece of fabric. So again, you'll see there are shifts from the original to the paper, to the fabric, but you will never get exactly a, a straight color match from paper to fabric, but it's super beautiful. Next, we have another. So here's a great example of an original piece of art that we felt was just too warm in color palette and didn't sort of hold the whole collection together. So we took the original art, we scanned it in and we manipulated colors so we could get a lot of the highs and lows and we could bring purple in and we could bring in those rich teals and turquoise so that you can see just how beautiful it coordinates as we start pulling the various pieces together. You know, this pulls out the beautiful browns and some of the pinks and the lavenders. And then you've got the original masterpiece Again, it's just so yummy. So you've got the blues in here and the purples that pull together. And then here's the actual piece of fabric that has resulted. So it starts to come together and you can see just how beautiful it really is. And look at how gorgeous the coordinates are there. So then we go from those pieces, and I forget what number I'm up to at this point, four, but here's the next piece. So here is an original piece. So Denise is really, she's just so clever. She paints on so many different substrates. So on this one, she actually painted on canvas. And you'll see, you know, oftentimes we find that a lot of yellow doesn't really resonate with our customer base. So we've chosen to pull away this particular border and just use the majority of her artwork, which was just so interesting and almost a throwback, sort of like mid-century, groovy, modern, 1960s, 70s. So we've taken that motif. Again, we've scanned it in. We've played with color a little bit. You'll notice we've removed some of the blue outline in these funky flowers. And we've punched up some of the greens in here again so that it comes back and coordinates beautifully with the other pieces in the collection. Pulls out those beautiful purples and greens. Here we've got more of the multicolor. So you're seeing the pullback on the beautiful fuchsias. You're seeing your purples. You've even got this sort of earthy tone which pulls in the brown over here. And then this is what the strike off look like. And listen, we don't always hit it the first time out of the park with strike off. Sometimes we do the very first strike off and sometimes we go back three and hate say it, oftentimes even four because we're incredibly picky in this department. Picky, picky, picky. So um, again, you'll just see how beautiful the whole collection really is. It's super rich, it's super saturated. And I feel like in this particular collection, we would not have necessarily been able to achieve all the subtleness and the changes in color and the movement if we had done this traditionally. So, so with that said, I'm gonna turn it over to Sharon so she can show the entire assortment because I didn't necessarily bring every piece and every strike off with us. Hello. Hello, come I'm on. I was having a little coffee fit earlier. Sarah took over, we're gonna show Sarah afterwards. <clears throat> <clears throat> so here are the uh, fabrics that we've actually received here in the office from the production. And so as Debbie just showed you the process of the digital fabrics, I can hear I'm still kind of losing my voice here. Okay, <clears throat> um, but here's the main print looking beautiful in production. Mm -hmm. And this was that feature print that Debbie originally introduced. And that's Vibrant Earth. And then Debbie just showed this one. Which is in the breeze. I could just see those flowers blowing around. In the breeze. And then these are great. Rita's solids, both of these, even Beautiful. though they're not. Paul, that's pollen in flight, which is one of my favorite because it's very fitting for this time of year. Mm -hmm. 
especially here in North and Carolina. And we took a little creative liberty in doing this beautiful, gorgeous, really rich berry color. But again, look at how it pulls in the berries over here, a vibrant mm -hmm. earth, and how it pulls in and pulls everything together between vibrant earth and the original piece, Sunrise Shimmer. It's just beautiful. But then you may choose to say, gee, I like something a little more authentic. And here you've got this yummy color palette. Again, pulling through the colors. This one's called, <clears throat> excuse me, All In Together. Is this fabric? You talked about this one. We did talk about that one. Mm. Look at these beautiful so stripes. While you're there, Sharon, I'm going to pull out. Here's her original painting on this. So again, you can see how all the colors run together. And so it's so important to be able to get, and you can see how we're able to achieve it. Obviously, I have just a small portion, but if you saw the repeat, you would see this pick up as you move forward and move around. But it's just beautiful. So you, too, can own a little bit of Denise's beautiful art. Mm -hmm. And this one's beautiful, you know, for a stripe and anything that you might be working on. It's just a stripe. And we have this, what, what did she use? Were these like washers? Yeah, they were washers. Floating along. So these were like washers that she used with color. It's just so beautiful. It'd be a nice geometric to add, you know, with your stripe, your geometric. If you're looking at your quilt in that way. And as Debbie pointed out earlier, all these colors play very nicely back and forth with each other. And even this green coming up here. This one is dewdrops. Dewdrops. I'm reading it off the selvage. <laughs> so the dewdrops again plays back and forth with all of the colors in this collection. And this last one is called Wafting Leaves. This is very, very pretty as well. A lot of uh, vibrancy in the color. You can see some of the fine detail in the art in this piece, which is picked up very nicely uh, in the production process. You could totally see the magic marker scribbles right. in that, can't right. you though? Yeah. I mean, it really looks oh, like a cross there. between satin stitching and scribbling with a magic marker. You can almost feel how ferocious she was in doing that. <laughs> and then I would also like to show you some of the inspiration. So here are all the colors. I don't know if Sarah can pick this up well or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the whole collection. And then we don't have any physical pieces of inspiration. So I'd just like to show you, here's one of the pieces of inspiration. Help me walk around this way. So this is called Stillness Captured Quilt. This is designed by Carrie Thompson, who happens to also be from Australia. Very appropriate. Oh so, yes, Carrie had a nice feeling for this collection. This, uh, what's nice about this quilt is that you can see it uses some of the smaller scale pieces in it. Well, actually the big ones in it too. But it's showing, you know, if you're going to cut it up, what it would look like in a quilt. And then this one, love this one. This is very pretty. In the center here, this is evening and morning breeze. So it's the two different colorways. And what's nice about this quilt is that you could, you could see in this piece here that this is a whole cloth quilt. You could buy like that main print. You could just, you know, do a whole cloth quilt with that. But yet here in the center, what's nice is that it, this isn't a Bargello, but it has a Bargello feel to the design. And you can see that all these pieces cut up smally, smaller, how nice it looks. And again, just picking this up on the other side to make it as one presentation. And then here we're using it in the other colorway with a different main feature print. And then the last one is called the Dawn Quilt. And you can see here, again, Carrie designed all of these for us. And you can see how nicely she worked in some uh, flying geese in here. She's got the big main print and then how she used the stripe in the border. And, you know, it just shows the versatility of the collection. You see it as it is in the whole cloth. And then you can see it all broken up uh, or cut up is what I mean to say in the quilt and it still works beautifully. So that is, I believe, everything that we were going to, Debbie, are you showing anything else? Well, I was just going to kind of show everyone how one collection transitions to another. So this is from the original. This is from her original. No, this is not from her original. This is from her second collection, Fancy Free. And so again, you'll see how much attention we've paid. Like, look how beautifully this still works together. You know, it doesn't have to always be from the same collection. You might still have some pieces left in your stash from a collection past like this, and you can bring it in and it works just beautifully. 
here you might want to bring in a little bit of you know this beautiful aqua coloration and here we've got a stronger bolder yellow but boy doesn't that still work beautifully mm -hmm. that's really nice with this one right there mm -hmm. and then these were some of our makers favorites mm -hmm. and look at how gorgeous and i love that is, and then if we take the second color away, we can bring it down here and play. And you'll see just how beautiful all of that works. So again, you know, we always think about how the maker is going to use this in the long run. And no stash ever goes to waste. I mean, it's just beautiful. Now I've made a mess out of our design room, but <laughs> you will see just how gorgeous all of those fabrics still play with each other. And again, remember, she's being inspired by the beautiful outback in Australia and the beautiful countryside. So obviously there's gonna be a lot of synergy from collection to collection. We do pump color up here and there because it's not always about natural coloration. So we wanna find a little bit more joy, um, but I will give you a sneak preview that her next collection is gonna be a little more muted. So for those people that like a softer palette, I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about 2022, so don't worry about that right now. Think about Stillness in Nature. It's gonna be available in stores in June, and it is just gorgeous. Alrighty, so, there's Sarah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. Oh I just did that to Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah was behind the camera. She jumped in. Thank you. We appreciate it. Um, so what? who wants to still be on with me? I don't really want to be alone here. Well, you can be alone. I'm cleaning up. All right. <laughs> I'll well, answer questions. I would like to say thank you to all of you for joining us this week. And thank you to Debbie and the design team here at Free Spirit. Well, thank you, Sharon, we, for having us. Well, we... You guys do a lot of work and we as makers and quilters appreciate it very much. And I'd like to thank Sarah. Why am I still seeing myself? I'd like Hi. to thank Sarah. Yeah. Did you know you have people from all over the world on today? No, tell us. You have people all across the United States from Yay. Pennsylvania to Texas to Montana. Uh, but then a place named Pat Patascala, which I'm not sure where that is. Oh, I think that might Patas be Carrie. That okay. might be from um, okay. Australia, I'm not sure. And then uh, France and Canada. Wow. Wow. And I just want everybody to know we're not crazy here in the US. Yes, we all have vaccinated. Yes. We've been yes. vaccinated. Okay. We're all good to be together. We do have face masks. However, we don't want to play favorites on the screen. And so we didn't <laughs> wear our masks today. And we're all healthy. And I hope you all are too. Yes, everybody is. Thank you, Debbie. Thank we you, love you, your design. We love you guys too. Do you, do you Thank have you, any Sarah. questions you would like to ask? Oh, yes, we did. Giveaway? We did have a question for a giveaway, did we not? We did. Uh, my notes are in the other room. <laughs> the question was, we are going to give away some, some of this beautiful fabric that we just showed you. Half yard cuts of this next collection that's shipping next month. And uh, Stillness in Nature. So we're going to give you half yard cuts of all of this. And what we wanted to know in order for you guys to win is what did you learn today? What did you learn about digital fabric that you may not have known prior to Debbie telling us about the process? So that is what we would like to know. And we, uh, Sarah is gonna pick a winner. And you know, Sharon, I think we should also mention that we're very, very particular about the suppliers we use when we do digital fabrics. We've done a lot of investigation. We've done a lot of testing with several different suppliers. And we feel like our supplier is bar none outstanding. And all of our product goes through rigorous third-party testing. So it's just as luxurious and vibrant and long-lasting as a traditionally printed fabric. So I think that's something that we really need to talk about because digital fabric has come a long way in the last 10 years, even in the last five years. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. Sure. We do have some questions. Oh, good. Are you ready? Yes. Oh, I got the two right, pros. You got an answer. Okay. How do you make it one big design that repeats instead of seeing repeats of the squares slash rectangles of the original art? Well, that is a question for my incredible team because it is my incredible team that takes the original art 
and oftentimes puts it into repeat specifically with Denise Burkett. So, you know, once they scan the whole piece in, oftentimes um, Natalie happens to be our in-house design person that works on this with us. She's incredibly talented. I've known her for years. She is an absolute doll to have on the team. And I think what I need to say is she often will go in and she lays it out based on all of the mathematical requirements in getting a repeat done. But it is a little easier to do a digital repeat than a traditional repeat because you're not limited by screen count and you're not limited by the size of the screens or rollers that are being used. So she can lay it out however it looks interesting. Sometimes we talk about a half drop. Sometimes it may be a complete just flip of the design. It depends on the individual design. And then she fills in areas so that you don't get those designated squares or rectangles or whatever the case might be. I hope I answered that I think well. you did. You did a Thank great you. job. Okay. And I'm sorry if you already answered this question. Does digitally printed fabric wash like traditionally printed fabric? Absolutely. Okay. Always pre-wash your fabrics, follow the instructions on the board and label, and your digitally printed fabric will last just as long and just as well as traditionally printed. Okay. When painted on canvas as opposed to paper, does the grain show up creating more texture? Yes, often it will, but it depends on what your final piece of fabric is supposed to look like. So oftentimes we have designers who do paint on canvas and one of those designers is Katie Pasquini Massapus. She paints a lot on canvas. We scan those pieces in and then we manipulate and play in our program to eliminate or reduce some of it. Sometimes we want some of that canvas showing through and some, sometimes we don't, sometimes we want flatter color. So whether we're printing traditionally or digitally and Katie, we happen to do traditionally, we can manipulate so we keep the canvas texture or we can eliminate the canvas texture. That's really interesting. Okay. Is the new trend to have more, is the new trend to have more large and medium scale designs moving away from smaller scale designs? I don't know if that's a trend. I think it depends on the maker. I think it depends on the artist. I think it depends on the pattern you might be making. And maybe the goal um, of the collection. Maybe. The goal of the collection, listen, our goal every time we create a collection, no matter how big our scale is, that it's balanced. We have large, medium, and small scale. We have light, medium, and dark prints. That is always, and so even though this scale is huge, look how much smaller this scale is. So here's our large, and here's our small, and here's our dark, and here what serves as a dark. And this one is probably considered more of a light because it's such a pop of color, you know? So I think it, it just really depends. As long as your collection has good variety, I think we've achieved success. Great. Wait, a question just popped up on my watch. <laughs> so hold well, on. Siri was oh. talking to me before. So. Can you take this one second? Yeah. Somebody was asking a question about, let's see, I did not know we should pre-wash digitally printed fabrics. Is this always? You should pre-wash any fabric. Yes, it is always highly recommended. Yeah. Yeah, and that, I know it is a debate. A debate. Yes. <laughs> it is a debate and I understand that, but theoretically you should pre-wash all your fabrics. Right. Other Any than others? That, everyone is just busy answering our giveaway question, which we will, um, I can't see them, but I will read them all and I will pick out. Yeah, Sarah will be winner, picking. And um, you'll get half yard cuts of this collection. Yes. And it is beautiful. It's Keep so an eye beautiful. out for Denise Burkett. She is just lovely. And I wish she could have been the guest to talk about her art and her process because she is just lovely. She is. And I also want to remind everybody that by Annie had also made some beautiful bags out of this collection that she had shown on a previous Inspired By. So if you'd like to see how this collection would look in that way, other than a quilt, go and look at the um, Inspired By. No, not on oh. me. On that inspired by um, to, to see the bags. So with this, we're going to say goodbye. Don't turn it to me. I have to go to the
computer and shut us off. But we thank you all for joining us. And again, thank you, Debbie. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Sarah, who's thank now Sarah. holding the uh, iPad. Thank you, and thank you, thank you for, for joining us. us today. They're going to see you. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you.